Explain to me why automatic litter boxes are so expensive. I mean, look at this thing. It's $700 for a tub of plastic with a motor on it. And I can't afford that, so I'm not getting one unless I make it. And we just got a second cat. So the frequency at which the litter box needs to be cleaned is a little absurd. So I really would like one, which means we're gonna make one. Here we have the box. It needs to be cleaned at least twice a week, but even when you do that, it still stinks. So let's talk about some goals for the project. In any project I do, the most important goal is to troll my wife. If I can't laugh at it, it's not worth doing. The second goal is to remove this stank. I would love for whatever I make to be able to clean the litter box every single time a cat goes in it. I care about my cats a lot and I don't want them to get hurt. So I need some sort of notification system that tells me when this thing is going off so that I can make sure that there are no cats in it while it's doing it, at least at first. It needs to be able to detect if there's a cat in it because I really don't want it to tumble a cat. I want it to record whatever metrics I can get out of this because I'm an engineer and I need that. So the plan is to buy a RFID reader. We're going to use that to figure out which pet is which. Then we're gonna make some custom messages and we're gonna have those get sent to my wife's phone once a cat goes in the litter box and get some home assistant integrated speaker. We're gonna have it play some kind of message. I'm, I'm not sure what yet. So I got this RFID reader module, which came with this antenna, which is pretty big for an RFID antenna. And it works from pretty far away, like seven inches, which I mean, I don't know if you know, like most RFID stuff like in your phone, it, it works really close. So that's pretty good. But the, let me, let me just show you my problem with it. So if we have a little fern here and she's going into the litter box, it has to sit above her like this. It also has to go through her skin, which means the range is reduced. So it's not gonna be that full like seven inches, like I said. But if we had it so that she could pass through it, then it would always read the chip because it's basically zero distance. But this one is just way too small. It has to be big enough for her to be able to do it comfortably and won't try to destroy it. Antennas feel like magic. They transmit energy throughout the world and we use it to control everything. But are they really that hard to understand? The truth is, antennas aren't that hard to understand. If I take this wine glass, this is a lot like an antenna. I can put some energy into it and it rings. It sends energy through the air in the form of sound. It's sort of the same with an antenna. You put some energy in and you get an electromagnetic wave. In order to understand how antennas receive data though, we need to understand what resonance is. And I think that the easiest way to think about resonance is picture an opera singer trying to break her glass. Ah! What's really happened? Well, those sound waves are traveling through the air and the glass is absorbing. And if it's at the right frequency, the glass breaks. It's the same thing with the antenna. You have the electromagnetic waves traveling through the air, being absorbed by the antenna and resonating. And that translates to a spike that you can read. In this case, your spike was the glass exploding. Now that we know how antennas work, let's actually make one. Here I'm making a frame for it that's big enough for my cats to fit through. I'm splitting the antenna up into eight different sections so that it will actually fit on my 3D printer. And I'm splitting it across the middle so that it prints with no supports. The frame has a lip on the outer edge to retain wire that will be used to actually make the antenna. And the frame has pegs that help align and assemble the rest of the frame. All right, now that we've designed an antenna, we can start assembling it. We're gonna try and hit somewhere around 580 microhenry, but inductors have pretty loose tolerances, so we're probably not gonna hit exactly that. In general, plus or minus 10% is considered pretty good. So anywhere from like 540 to 630 is acceptable, I think. The actual assembly is gonna be a little bit trial and error, and I'm just gonna measure it with my LCR meter. I did the math and it should be something like five loops of wire stacked five times for approximately 580 microhenry, but that didn't give me quite that, probably because I'm not a machine. So originally when I was testing the antenna, I was just grabbing whatever cat was closest and scanning them, but that got old pretty fast and I don't want to disturb them when they're sleeping or whatever. I opted to look for a different solution and it turns out you don't even need to be a vet. You can just buy RFID implants on Amazon. You don't need a license or anything. Like no questions asked. So I got some. So I finished making a bigger antenna. I matched the inductance to what the documents 
for the RFID reader set, which was something around 580 millihenry. And it works, but it'll only work if I have the RFID chip and it's like close to the edge and it's not super reliable. So if I have it towards the middle, it just, it just doesn't read. So I think the inductance is off because I used my LCR meter to measure the inductance of the original coil and that was like 650 millihenry. So I'm gonna try to make the coil have higher inductance, but I'm not super confident about it because I already glued all this up so it wouldn't break. So I just came home to find this. I wonder who could have done something like that, huh? One eternity later. Hello, it's been a while. And it's definitely not because I broke some PCBs. No PCBs were harmed in the making of this film. Don't look at those. Anyway, we got some stuff. I was really struggling to figure out how to do presence detection. And then it hit me. These exist. This is a millimeter wave sensor. And they can detect if you're like breathing. So this should be super accurate. Also got an ESP32 C3. This is what's gonna communicate with Home Assistant. And we got our smart speaker, which is going to troll my wife. So we fixed the antenna, we wrote some code, we got it talking to Home Assistant, and we made some custom voices that represent each of my cats. I'm not gonna go over the code right now because it's bound to change. I haven't integrated the millimeter wave sensor yet, and I'm sure there are other things that I'll want to include. But if you wanna learn about embedded rust, I'll provide some resources in the description for you to check out. So I need a fern. If we scan a fern, Hi, Mommy. I go into the bathroom now. <laughs> we get a cute little message from Fern. I think we're at a point where we can install this in the current litter box and get some reactions out of my wife. Making our custom whole litter box is, is gonna be a different video, I think. Since this is gonna be a temporary installation, I'm not gonna do anything crazy. I'm just gonna use some Kapton tape and throw it inside where you can't really see it. All right, got it installed and you can't really see it unless you really look. But just walking by, you'd never notice. The only thing that's really noticeable is um, this cable, which I don't think it's noticeable enough to matter. So, all good. Hi, Mommy. I go into the bathroom now. Servant, I am going to the restroom. Be sure to clean it. Wife. Yes. How do you feel about part one of... Part one? <laughs> of the automated litter box. Is that what we're calling it? <laughs> well, it's gonna be. Okay. <laughs> right now it just feels like wife annoyance <laughs> machine. Part one? <laughs> you know, I think the voices are pretty accurate. I will say that. Good, good, good. I tried really hard to make them good. <laughs> Be like we're in a job interview. <laughs> it's like a so, first date. So why? So why are you applying for this job? Man? I didn't ask for this. Do you do you think that it is funny? I think it's um, funny to everyone except now it's funny. <laughs> I can't say it's not, it's funny. <laughs> Never know what's gonna happen in this house. What features would you like to see in an automated litter box? Well, you know, you say those words and I would assume that it would clean itself. So that would be a nice feature. <laughs> that is in fact a goal. I think that's probably the only feature I care about. Oh, okay. That's fair enough, I guess. I think that's the feature Athena would like the best too. Cause she's stinky. What about a feature where she can't get all the litter outside of the box? That's a fern problem. <laughs> Someone likes to burrow like a little ferret. See, Athena just scratches the wall. Yeah. Fern gets it all out of the box. She wants to be underneath the litter, inside, within, part of the litter. <laughs> and then she walks up to you after and she's got dusty brown feet. And then when you just... wear pretty much only black, you pick her up and you've got dust stains all over your clothes. And then she smells like the litter. Yeah, they're both stinky in their own ways. Little stinkers. So I guess this is a step in the right direction. You got me on board. This is the first YouTube video that I've decided to take somewhat seriously. And hopefully that means it's my worst one. I've definitely learned a lot making this video and I really do hope to improve in the future. I really appreciate if you've watched this far into the video and I, I'm here to say thank you. Other maker YouTube channels 
like William Osmond, Michael Reeves, Alan Pan, Backyard Scientist, like they've all inspired me for so long and I've always wanted to make something like that, like a channel and I'm deciding to, to do that now. And I really hope if you enjoy that sort of content that you will consider sticking around here as well. I have a lot of ideas and I'd love to share them with you. You gotta stay here for a minute. Listen to this girl. Thanks, Fern.